During the mid-thousands and early 2010s, pop rap had carved out a significant influence on radio. Chances are you would hear artists like Pitbull, Florida, and Travis McCoy featured on some of the biggest pop hits during that time. But none quite mastered the pop rap collaborations like B.O.B. His melodic hooks sung by superstar counterparts and his southern and sometimes corny raps completely took over the airwaves for a point in time. But how does someone who went from collaborating with such juggernauts like Taylor Swift, Bruno Mars, and Haley Williams completely fall off the face of the earth? Well, let's discuss how it all went so flat so quickly. B.O.B. began to create a buzz in the industry after his song Haters Everywhere in 2007. He continued to release songs and mixtapes, and even landed on the XXL freshman class for 2009. And if you don't know, the XXL freshman class is, or at least was, a pretty big deal in hip-hop, and gave a spotlight to artists who were positioned to go on and do big things. It's safe to say they aren't always accurate, but looking back, it makes perfect sense as to why B.O.B. made this list. He was even co-signed by T.I., who at the time was one of the hottest rappers in the industry. After a plethora of mixtapes, he finally made his mainstream media introduction with Nothing On You, alongside Bruno Mars. And I absolutely love Nothing On You, and it's the superior track when it comes to Just The Way You Are, which I feel is sort of like Bruno's solo version of Nothing On You. I always felt like they lived within the same world. Just The Way You Are is the equivalent to Starbucks and mall music, and Nothing On You is just a slightly cooler variation of it. Like yes, you may hear Nothing On You in Starbucks as well, but it just has that extra flavor due to B.O.B.'s raps. He just oozes charisma on this track, and the southern twang in his flow makes it even better. The song was originally meant for Lupe Fiasco, but B.O.B. pretty much owns the track. The song was a massive hit, eventually landing itself at the number one position on the Hot 100, so B.O.B. came out the gate swinging. But none of his hits have left quite an impact on Gen Z as much as Airplanes featuring Hayley Williams. Airplanes is a song that I would say used the Eminem formula. What I consider the Eminem formula is a super poppy, almost statement-like hook, sung by a woman with a distinctive tone or the rapper himself, accompanied with storytelling or motivational rap verses. It comes as no surprise that Eminem was actually featured on the remix of this song. This was also one of Hayley Williams' first endeavors outside of Paramore, and it paid off for both parties, peaking at number 2 on the Hot 100, and I think it showcases both of their strengths well. The song received a massive resurgence on TikTok in 2021, once again, resonating due to nostalgia. B.O.B.'s debut album titled B.O.B. Presents The Adventures of Bobby Ray was released in 2010, and well, it was pretty much what you would expect from a pop rapper during that era. Radio-friendly singles heavy. But the difference is, B.O.B. actually seemed to be a very charismatic rapper, with a lot of potential. I feel like he sort of sold himself short going this route. But nonetheless, it was effective. Every single release from the album charted, and it went on to sell well over 2 million copies. B.O.B. had begun with a more straightforward hip-hop approach during his underground days, and as he got bigger and began to pump out monstrous pop hits, he sort of began to lose respect from the hip-hop community. Cited from Billboard, the core underground hip-hop fanbase that Coleman encouraged him to hone in on in his early days always remained a focal point for B.O.B. too, and as he piled up the pop hits, he grew increasingly concerned with how he was being viewed within his own community. I wasn't that underground B.O.B. anymore, he laments. I was the beautiful girl's cardigan sweater wearing Malcolm X glasses B.O.B. I remember him coming to me in prison and he was like, how do I get the black girls to f with my shit? The shows are selling out, but it ain't none of us, recalls T.I. B.O.B. attempted to prioritize core hip hop fans with his mixtape releases, but when it came to working on an album, he faced label pressures to recreate his monstrous pop singles. For his second album, Strange Clouds, released in 2012, B.O.B. went into a more clubby hip-hop direction. He still had the pop songs, but didn't rely too much on it. Only one song from the album peaked within the top 10, and that was the lead single that features Lil Wayne, which is the title track. The album had features from the likes of Taylor Swift and Ryan Tedder, 
Unfortunately, none of the songs on the album had the same outreach as his earlier hits, and it signified a decline for B.O.B., not only commercially, but personally, because he wasn't satisfied with his art. I was getting further and further away from my connection to the music, he acknowledges. I really just wanted to be a rock star at that point. B.O.B. had a battle with his own success for quite some time. He wanted to experiment and take risks, yet he was introduced with such a marketable and wide appealing sound that those chances were often compromised into the pop smashes that we remember him for, and that he at some point resented. His third and final major label album, Underground Luxury, was released in 2013. None of the singles charted within the top 50, and it marked a steady decline. But B.O.B. didn't seem to care much. He eventually went independent in 2014 and dropped a mixtape. However, his most career-altering moment came in 2016, when he came out as a person who believes the earth is flat, and tweeted something that questioned the flatness of the rock we're living on, which set the internet ablaze. The tweet even prompted responses from people such as Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye. He then released a diss song towards Neil deGrasse Tyson, became a holocaust denier, and a conspiracist. The song is called Flatline, it was obviously panned, and it just turned him into a running joke. Amongst a plethora of things, he also dissed Mirror Lizards, which is probably the most comedic thing about the song. Like wow, B.O.B is so tough he's dissing Mirror Lizards, get a lot of that. And if you don't know what mirror lizards are, it's a combination of a human and a reptile, whose true form can only be seen in a mirror. The song is just pretty bad, and he continued to double down on it. The following year in 2017, B.O.B set up a GoFundMe page to send satellites into space to quote, find the curve. He was trying to raise a staggering amount of $1 million. NASA astronauts even responded to this campaign jokingly, stating that they obviously could save him a lot of money. Quite obviously, this campaign didn't work out for B.O.B., and honestly, it was probably just a scam anyway. It's one thing to not conform to popular standards, but he just completely went left field, which I can imagine turned a lot of fans off. He now says that he doesn't regret the question, but just the way he handled the responses. It definitely gets exhausting with people, he admits, laughing, when your inbox goes from girls sending you nudes to people sending you philosophy essays. It definitely takes some of the fun out of a cell phone. Eventually, B.O.B. took a step back from the spotlight and retired, which in rap music usually just means a short break. He began releasing music again in 2018, and he wishes he would have stayed close to people like Bruno Mars and Ty Dolla Sign. As an artist, you're always looking to get better, get more fans, more notoriety, B.O.B. reflects. You're trying to challenge yourself, and sometimes you have to come to terms with whatever happens. I've accepted that wherever I am is where I need to be. There are no mistakes, there are no f**k-ups. B.O.B. actually seems to be a bit more grounded now, and not overly outlandish. It seems to me as far as it goes with his career, that the music machine was just too much for him to handle, and something he didn't want to be a part of. A lot of times being a mainstream artist, you can be forced to compromise your music ideas or musical ambitions to reach mass appeal and follow a formula. Once he got out of the industry, he went the complete opposite direction, and obviously ostracizing his fan base with his somewhat outlandish beliefs and becoming a devoted conspiracy theorist for a point in time didn't help his case. I will say it is clear listening back to his older records, and the ones we were introduced to him with, that he did have some potential, but even when he went independent, he has never captured that potential in a way that is interesting or worth some observation. He just got lost in the shuffle and was a perfect pop artist for the time. There are a lot of thousands of artists where you can look back and be like, they deserved more, whether they got lost in label shuffles or fell behind the zeitgeist. But B.O.B. is not one of those artists. The pop industry isn't what he wanted, and he quickly got lost from the rap world. But the hits he did supply us with when he was at the top of the airwaves are still radio gems that are worth a listen.